for the sake of the records, could we have the appearances, please? For the prosecution. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honors. Peter McCloskey for the prosecutor, along with Stefan Lesby, Antoinette Issa, Milbert Shin, Ann Davis, Salvador Viada, and Janet Stewart. Thank you. And for the accused? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honors. Michael Karnavas, Susanna Tomanovich, and Alexander Momirov for Mr. Blagojevich. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Honors. We are here today in the following composition. Miodrag Stojanovic as the lead counsel of Mr. Jokic, assisted by co-counsel Branko Lukic and our case manager Dragoslav Dukic. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Blagojevic, can you hear the proceedings in a language that you understand? Your microphone, please. I have indicated, Your Honor, that yes, I can follow the proceedings in the Serbian language. Thank you very much. You may sit down, please. May I avail myself of this opportunity to add one more sentence, please? Yes, please. Your Honours, just for the record, I wish to indicate that I do not have a defence. That has been a problem since before the beginning of the trial. Thank you for your attention. You may sit down, please. Mr. Djokic, can you hear the proceedings in the language that you understand? Yes, I can, Your Honour. Thank you very much. If there are any problems in following the proceedings, you may raise it at any time. Please sit down. Um. What follows is a summary of the written judgment and forms no part of it. The written judgment will be made available to the parties and to the public at the end of this hearing. Chair Chamber 1 is sitting today to render our judgment in the case of Prosecutor vs. Vidio Blagojevich and Dragon Djokic. Both men are charged for crimes committed against Bosnian Muslims following the fall of Srebrenica enclave in July 1995. The horrible crimes committed following the fall of Srebrenica are well known. The mass murder of more than 7,000 Bosnian Muslim men and boys and the forcible transfer of the Bosnian Muslim women, children, elderly from this part of eastern Bosnia. These crimes were committed in little more than one week with a level of brutality and depravity not previously seen in the conflict in the former Yugoslavia and are among the darkest days in modern European history. At the outset, the trial chamber emphasizes that while the crimes committed in and around the Srebrenica in July 1995 formed the basis for this case, this case and this trial is ultimately about two men, Vidio Blagojevic and Dragon Djokic, and their alleged individual criminal responsibility. The trial chamber will therefore first list the charges brought against the accused and provide a brief overview of the procedural history of the case. 
It will then provide a summary of the factual allegations that underpin the crimes charged in this case. Next, it will examine the specific crimes and the criminal responsibility, if any, for each accused. Finally, it will enter its verdict. In July 1995, Vidio Blagojevich was the commander of the Bratunas Brigade and held the rank of colonel. It is alleged that by virtue of his position as commander of the Bratunas Brigade, Colonel Blagojevich participated in the forcible transfer of women children from the Sabrinica enclave to Gradania on 12th and 13th July and that he was responsible for all the prisoners captured, detained, <coughs> or killed within the Bratunas Brigade's zone of responsibility, including those prisoners that were subsequently transported with his knowledge to the Zwanik Brigade zone for further detention and execution. Vidio Blagojevich is charged with six counts under both Article 7.1 and Article 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal, namely complicity to commit genocide, extermination as a crime against humanity, murder as a crime against humanity and as a violation of laws and the customs of war, prosecution as a crime against humanity, and finally, inhumane acts, forcible transform, a crime against humanity. In July 1995, Dragon Djokic was the chief of engineering of the Zvonik Brigade and held the rank of major. Furthermore, from the morning of 14th July to the morning of 15th July, Dragon Djokic served as duty officer of the Zvanik Brigade. <coughs> Major Djokic, as chief engineering of the Zvanik Brigade, is accused of having assisted in the planning, monitoring, organi organizing, and carrying out the burials involved in the murder operation and of having as brigade duty officer assisted in coordinating communication between officers of the Army of the Republic of Srpska or the VRS and the commands involving the transportation, detention, execution and the burial of Bosnian Muslims from Srebrenica and the issued or transmitted reports and updates to superior on the progress of the overall murder operation. Accordingly, Dragon Jokic is charged with four counts under Article 71 of the statute, namely extermination as a crime against humanity, murder as a crime against humanity, and as a violation of laws or customs of war, punishable under Article 3 of the statute, and with prosecutions as a crime against humanity. Vidio Blagojevich was first uh, indicted on the 30th October 1998. Following amendment to this indictment in 1999, the case against him was joined in January 2002 with two other accused who charged with the crimes following the fall of Sabinica, including Dragon Djokic, who had been indicted on the 30th May 2001. In May 2002, a fourth accused Momio Niklic was joined to this case. Momio Niklic and Dragon Obranovich were subsequently sub separated from these proceedings following their guilty pleas.
The trial commenced on the 14th May 2003 and closed on the 1st October 2004. During this period, the trial chamber heard 104 witnesses and admitted the testimony of another 57 witnesses pursuant to Rule 92 bis. Evidence provided by more than 15 experts from fields including demographics, military affairs, and forensic pathology was admitted in the form of reports and testimony. More than 1,000 exhibits were admitted during the trial. Following the conclusion of the trial proceedings, the trial chamber and the parties conducted a site visit in Srebrenica, Bratunas, and the Zvonik municipality to assist the trial chamber in assessing the evidence admitted in the case. And now I would like to turn to Judge Vasilenko. Thank you. Uh, the facts. Uh, the trial chamber will <coughs> first provide a summary of the crimes committed in relation to the Bosnian Muslim population in Potachari and will then address the crimes committed against the Bosnian Muslim men. Following the attack on the Srebrenica enclave, 20,000 to 30,000 Bosnian, <coughs> Bosnian Muslims fled to Potachari a village located at the northern eastern part of the enclave where the Dutch bat battalion of the United Nations Protection Forces had its headquarters. The Dutch bat was unable to cope with the massive influx of refugees. It didn't have adequate supplies of food, water, or medicine for the refugees which was due in large part to the blockade of supplies into the enclave and to the Dutch battalion in the months preceding the attack. Negotiations between General Radka Mladic, commander of the VRS, and Dutch Bat on the night of 11 July resulted in the decision to bus the Bosnian Muslim population out of Potachari to non-Serb held territory. On 12 and 13 July, members of the VRS members of police units from Ministry of Interior or MUP and members of the civilian authorities of Bratunac were present in Potachari as well as members of the Dutch battalion. Among the VRS forces were some members of the Bratunac Brigade military police, members of, Brat of the Bratunac Brigade command and at least members of the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Bratnas Brigade Infantry Battalions. The trial chamber finds that Bosnian Muslim population in Potachari were subjected to cruel and inhumane treatment in Potachari. Some of the Bosnian Muslims in Potachari were subjected to beatings which caused severe pain and suffering. They didn't have sufficient space, food, or water, and were subjected to extreme forms of degradation. Men were separated from their family members, thus creating great anxiety among the population about the fate of the men. Muniba uh, Muic tried to follow her brother as he was taken away by VRS soldiers. She testified about the conversation she had with a soldier at the time. So I said, can I please take my bag to my brother? And he said, no, you won't. Don't take the bag. They won't need it. Because Nenat had told me they would not need that anymore. Uh, that seemed very suspicious to me. I found it very hard and I started to cry and I went past him, but his things were left behind and I just wanted to get to my brother. 
I didn't care about the things, so I went past him. <coughs> the trial chamber further finds that an atmosphere of terror that was created in Potachar. Armed members of the VRS were present and walked among the Bosnian Muslim refugees, taking people at will for beatings and other forms of serious abuse. Furthermore, identification documents were taken from the men, which sent a message among the Bosnian Muslim population that the men may not need their documents anymore because their fate, death, has been decided. The trial chamber finds that members of the Bosnian Muslim population were murdered in Potachari. While there is a little evidence to establish that there was an organized plan to murder Bosnian Muslims in Potachari, in the environment where beatings, severe abuse, and intimidation were not only tolerated, but seemingly encouraged, it was foreseeable that such murders would be committed. Uh, finally, the trial chamber further finds that Bosnian Muslim uh, women, children, and elderly were forcibly transferred from Potachara to non-Serb-held territory in Bosnia. While there is evidence that the Bosnian Muslims boarded the buses voluntarily and expressed the desire to leave Potachari, the trial chamber finds that in the context of the situation as it existed in Potachari, this transfer can be described as voluntary, but mu must be viewed as coerced or forced. Due to the in humanitarian crisis that prevailed in Potachari, created by the Bosnian Serbs forces, including the Bratman's Brigade, and the atmosphere of terror that reigned in Potachari, particularly on the night of 12 July, the Bosnian Muslim population and indeed the Dutch Bat faced, faced no choice but to move to another location where their safety, well-being, and indeed survival could be ensured. Uh, the majority of the Bosnian Muslim men in Srebrenica fled the enclave on night uh, of 10 July with the objective of breaking through to non serb <coughs> held territory around Tuzla. Over the course of the following day, more than 7,000 Bosnian Muslim men were captured, detained, and transported to execution sites in the Bratnitz and Zvornik municipalities, where they were murdered. The first stage of the operation against the Bosnian Muslim men included their detention in the town of Bratnitz on the night of 12 and 13 July. Colonel Blagojevic was present in Bratmans on both dates. Men who were forcibly separated from their families in Potachari, as well as men who were captured during the search of the terrain, were passed to Bratmans town. The men were either detained on the buses or in buildings in the Vuk Karadzic school complex. The small town of Bratunac was thus filled with Bosnian Muslim men. The Bratunac Brigade military police played a role in securing, or rather guarding, the detainees, thereby ensuring the continued control of the Bosnian Serb forces over these men. The trial chamber finds that during their detention in Bratunac, the Bosnian Muslim men were subjected to cruel and inhumane treatment. They were detained in inhumane conditions. They were not <coughs> given sufficient food, water, or medical treatment, and were detained in overcrowded spaces, often without basic facilities. The men were subjected to random acts of violence. Beatings, verbal abuse, and threats to their well-being were continuous. 
shooting could be heard throughout the night, as could the occasional scream of detainees taken outside of the school or of the bus and murdered. The Bratnets Brigade Military Police were involved in guarding the detainees, and in the case of the Vuk Karadzic School had a role in controlling who entered and left premises. While most men captured from the column were brought to Bratnets Town on 13 July, the Bosnian Muslim men captured and held in the Sandwich Meadow were either forced to walk to or were bust. The short distance to the Kravitsa very house, which is located on the main Bratnets Konyevich Poly Road in the Bratnets municipality. The nearly 1,000 men who were detained in the Kravitsa warehouse were murdered on the night of 13 July as Bosnian Serbs uh, forces fired automatic weapons direct, directly into the warehouse. Once the majority of the men were killed, the Bosnian Serb forces called out the survivors and summarily executed them outside the warehouse in plain view of the road. <coughs> On the morning of 14 July, a convoy of approximately 30 buses filled with Bosnian Muslim men left Bratnitz for Zvornik. Members of the Bratnitz Brigade served as an escort for this convoy. The Bosnian Muslim men were taken to various temporary detention centers in Zvornik municipality, including Grabovci School, the Petkovic School, and the Pilica School. Between 14 and 16 July, the men were blindfolded, put on buses, <coughs> and taken to nearby fields where group after group of helpless, terrified Bosnian Muslim men were executed. The fields in Rahovac, the Petkovici Dam, and the brand new military farm were literally killing fields filled with bodies of Bosnian Muslim men. Witness P111, a Bosnian Muslim man who was 17 years old at the time the crimes were committed, described the desperate atmosphere at Petkovic Dam among the men brought there to be executed. Many people were screaming, give us water and then kill us. We were really so thirsty. We just couldn't take it anymore, even if you were going to be killed within moments of that. We were playing for time. We were just living for another extra few seconds as others were killing, as others were being killed. I was praying that I be killed too because I was in terrible pain, but I dared not call out to them. So I just thought that my mother would never know where I was, as I was thinking that I'd like to die. The Pilica Cultural Center was filled to capacity with approximately 500 Bosnian Muslim men. This detention facility turned into execution site on 16 July as men uh, cowered in the corner seeking protection or were forced to stand on the stage of the cultural center. VRS soldiers fired automatic weapons and threw grenades into the building. There are no there are no known survivors of this mass execution. Loaders and excavators were either already on the sites at the time of the executions or arrived soon thereafter 
to bury the dead in mass graves. The Zvornik Engineering Company often provided both the machinery and the operators for the burial operation. The trial chamber finds that the facts, as briefly described herein, establish that the crimes of genocide, extermination, murder, persecution through murder, cruel and inhumane treatment terrorizing the civilian population and forcible transfer, and inhumane acts, forcible transfer, were committed in July 1995 following the fall of the Srebrenica enclave. The trial chamber will not repeat its finding on the law in detail here, but will highlight certain findings. In relation to the crime of genocide, the trial chamber finds that the acts through which genocide was committed were killing members of the group and causing ser serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. The group is defined as the Bosnian Muslims of Srebrenica. The trial chamber finds that serious, serious bodily or mental harm was inflicted on members of the Bosnian Muslim group through various means including by forcing the displacement of the Bosnian Muslim population from Srebrenica, by separating men from the rest of the population, by terrorizing the Bosnian Muslim population in Potocari, by subjecting members of the group to serious physical or mental abuse in Potocari and in detention centers, and by causing sever severe trauma to those men who managed to survive the executions. The trial chamber further finds that in the circumstances of this case, through the manner and means in which it was carried out, the forcible transfer of the Bosnian Muslim population from the Srebrenica enclave in combination with the killings or on its own caused serious mental harm so as to be an act of genocide. The trial chamber finds that the specific intent to destroy in whole or in part the Bosnian Muslim group as such can be inferred from the events which followed the Krivaya 95 military operation, which had as its ultimate objective the elimination of the Srebrenica enclave, namely the forced removal of the Bosnian Muslims out of the Srebrenica enclave, the separation of main members of the Bosnian Muslim community in Potocari, the forcible transfer of the Bosnian Muslim women, children and elderly from Serb-held territory, and ultimately the murder of more than 7,000 Bosnian Muslim men and boys. The trial chamber finds that the term destroy refers only to the physical and biological destruction of the group. It does not include cultural genocide. The trial chamber further finds that such destruction should not simply be equated with killing. Why killing large numbers of a group may be the most direct means of destroying a group, other acts or series of acts can also lead to the destruction of the group. The trial chamber finds, finds that depending on the circumstances and manner in which a forcible transfer is carried out, it may lead to the destruction of the protected group. In this case, the forcible transfer was directed at the protected group, the Bosnian Muslims of Srebrenica. It was preceded by the separation of the community by gender. The trial chamber finds the separation of the Bosnian Muslim men from the rest of the Bosnian Muslim group to be a critical piece of evidence in establishing that the Bosnian Serbs who organized and implemented the transfer did not want the Bosnian Muslim group to ever reconstitute itself as a group in Srebrenica or elsewhere and therefore they intended to physically destroy the group. In relation to the displacement of the Bosnian Muslim population from the Srebrenica enclave, the trial chamber finds that the Bosnian Muslim population was forci forcibly transferred from the area in which they were lawfully present 
for reasons other than those recognized under international law, namely the security of the population or imperative military necessity.